Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Conversations with Tyler. Today, I'm chatty with Toby Lutka, who is the co-founder and CEO of Shopify, the famous Canadian e-commerce firm. Toby, welcome. Huh, so good to be here. So good to see you, Tyler. I have so many questions. Do you still do stand-up meetings? <laughs> Uh, like um, whenever we have hack days, I do them. I, I you know what I feel. We need to make a comeback. Like the Friday afternoon stand up meeting is just one of the greatest um, uh, accelerants um, for 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 businesses. I'm, I'm highly encouraging everyone to do them. The digital version doesn't work so well, does it? Like it's some Slack bot or so telling everyone to stand up and type something. It's just like it doesn't do the same thing. And it's it may be one of the problems harder, remote yeah, companies. harder to monitor. What other systems do you have for getting good information out of meetings? <laughs> um, out of meetings? So, um, um, okay, so I grew up as like, Outsider, like it's as in, um, um, I kind of have an outsider mindset, which is kind of hard to uh, um, 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 argue from first principles at this point. But like, um, in a small town that was super not interested in 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 in, in computing in Germany, um, um, uh, and um, so I I I learned all sorts of skills for um, observing. Um, People doing interesting things from afar, you know, just like I, I my, my lifeline back in those days was like um, uh, getting a copy of um, uh, the, the the back archives of the Linux uh, kernel mailing list and so on. This is how I learned like C programming and so on. So, um, um, so I, I, I grew up as like an observer on information. That's what I do when I um, uh, just for fun a lot. Um, and um, um, also, that means I grew up on the internet, um, which. Um, it's good and bad. So one of my um, ways to get a lot of out of meetings often involves um, saying high conviction, incorrect things, and just waiting to figure out, like like seeing everyone wanting to correct me. It's it's, it's a more efficient way of. Uh, um, um, so it's um, like Twitter. Yes, basically. if you want to learn like something, say, you say something, something wrong, wrong on the internet. Yes, um, um, it works in real life too. Um, it's not people's favorite thing I do, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Like it, we have a wiki inside, and there's a blueprint for me, and it says that I do this. So some people are re reasonably have reasonable warning these days. The systems for making meetings better should we also use them in our social lives? <laughs> Family dinners, <laughs> you get together with friends. I don't know. I, I, I've seen. Um, I, I, I think uh, porting what makes companies work too far into private lives can also uh, backfire. Um, um, I um, although I did. You know, with my kids, I always booked one on ones. Um, so, so um, um, uh, they, they they call them dinner appointments, and uh, we, we we you know just I I I tell them I'm gonna treat you as an adult, and you uh, you're gonna have an adult conversation until you say you're a kid again, and um, I'm gonna answer every one of your questions to the best of my abilities, and we they choose some restaurant we go there, and that's what we've done for um for a while and of course that's um uh you know cell phones down i think that's an important thing to do um what we do with meetings is like we, we inside of company we do a bunch of things we you know periodically delete uh all meetings um uh, recurring meetings because um um it's just it's it, it seems very hard for people to subtract um it's very easy to add um that only leads one way and um so we have ceremonies like this I would it would be interesting what would happen if everyone would have to zero sum their follow follow list, <laughs> you know, zero budget their follow list. I I think that would significantly change people's experience with, uh, with social media. I wonder if that's a good idea. Also, with your your friendships, it's striking to me when I'm in Italy. I very often see what I call street conferences. That is, people talking to each other often heatedly, and they're standing. When I'm in Germany, people are talking to each other heatedly. They tend to be sitting. Do you have a similar impression? <laughs> what a fascinating observation. Um, uh, you know, the idea, yeah. am tisch, it's, it's something yeah. very German about it. You can pound your fist on the table. It's a, it's a stammtisch, really. But, yeah. but, but really, uh, you know, um, um, I think pop, in both those instances, people do something, which I think has a lot of relevance to um, the sort of real life versus social media um, uh, conundrum that people are wrestling with, which is that um, I think there's a significant human need unacknowledged for venting. I think venting is like one of those extremely important um, uh, uh, outlets um, um, uh, that like it's sort of an original safe space in a way where like at some point people say, okay, well, you're clearly off. At least people say this to me. <laughs> like I, I can go pretty far in venting. Uh, it's, like, you know, Germans can be going very far. Like <laughs> stereotypes are funny because they often are true. And um, so um, 
uh, venting, catastrophizing, these kind of things, and then having your friends reel you in. But the issue I think we've seen over, especially sort of the beginning of this decade is, um, as people like ported their venting online, um, and then got their sort of one take, uh, retweeted forever, um, because it just captured the imagination. Um, I, I, I feel people misunderstood what was actually going on for a little bit. And I, I, I hope, um, everyone has sort of acclimatized to this reality now. So how do we create safe outlets for venting in companies or institutions? What is it that one does? Because you don't want it to turn into negative contagion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think like even just talking about venting being a thing that's actually a good and, 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 and prefixing when someone just wants to actually just say, or get a bunch of things like field test some, um, uh, takes is a good idea. I, I, I think, I think that can disable the power of it spiraling everyone on, um, uh, or, uh, right, right after. And I think that's, I think that's useful, but I don't know. I've seen, I don't, I didn't go to it because it wasn't my neck of the woods, but like I've seen, um, uh, parties organized or evenings organized now where everyone gets a, um, 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 a note with a outrageous, um, uh, position, um, uh, that they are supposed to represent for the rest of the evening. And, um, um, then they're supposed to like tear it up and toss it away. Um, just to allow people to have plausible deniability on whatever they want to talk about, because they can just like fall on, Oh, I was told to uh, represent this. And I think that's, you know, that seems like, I don't know if it's a good idea, but I, I, I'd love, I'd love that someone is trying this because that seems like, um, uh, social license to actually like, like talk about stuff that otherwise can't be talked about and seeing where it leads. And often it leads to exactly <laughs> the wrong place. And then, uh, you know, you get that out of your system and then you don't need to share this as a tweet afterwards. Are German meetings different? Yes. Um, how? So I'm German. I grew up for 20 years in Germany. I then moved to Canada. You're so, from Koblenz, uh, right? I'm from Koblenz, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I celebrated 2000 years, uh, um, uh, when I was a teenager there. Um, um, uh, Julius Caesar might have come through and that was probably the most exciting thing that ever happened there. Um, the, um, um, I, I, th I think it goes back into the stereotypes culture. Uh, I, um, Again, I'm 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 German. I started a company with another German, both in Canada for Americans. So like Shopify is sort of interesting uh, milieu of uh, different cultures. Um, I think that um, well, I mean, straight off the bat, it's it's Germans just are blunt. <laughs> like like we're just like there's just no shit sandwich configuration that needs to be constructed to say if something is bad. I think Germans have a more uh, innately higher quality bar like is, is and 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 um less tolerance for underperformance on that quality bar it's 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 pretty um like products are either like below it or um you know good great work class above it but like below that nothing else registers as anything of value which is totally different in north america and i think that's good and bad that comes from this i think i think sort of a cultural appreciation for good products craftsmanship um uh done right and so on is is, is, is something you know like that's um uh, more associated with uh with europe but the quick iteration be embarrassed by the first version um and and and, and then build from there is something that you know north america does better and and so it's interesting um I, I've seen this in, uh, in 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 meetings where people fell on cultural lines of uh you know is this should we ship this should we not ship this is it valuable to build it this way or should we um you know spend a couple like spent months and months and months trying to figure out exactly what to build and then build that and try to get it as close to perfect as possible or, or should we just like iterate very very quickly um and um so yes they go differently are canadians different in meetings than u.s americans yeah um as well yes that's uh true it's 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 more on the side of american on definitely on a, on a, on a um, minimum quality bar um it's uh I think Canadians are le uh, uh, are often more about long term, like just like um like like I I've seen Canadians more often think about what's the next step after this step, um, um, but also l l just lower ambition. That's um I that's probably not the most popular thing to say around here, but like uh, Canada has sometimes like C Canada's problem often culturally is um a go for bronze mentality, um and um 
um, which apparently is not uncommon for smaller countries attached to significantly more cultural or, um, big, or, or just bigger countries. Um, but I think it's, um, um, it's actually, I found it's very easy to work around because I think it's, um, if someone, you know, um, I think a lot of our success has been due to, um, you know, just me and my co-founder basically allowing everyone to go for work class and everyone's like, oh, okay, well, if we're allowed to do this, then let's go. And uh, I think that ma makes a big difference. But this is in, in, in like ratcheting up the ambition for a project is something that, um, one has to do in a company, uh, in, like in Canada. But is there something scarce that is needed to inject that into Canada and Canadians? Or is it simply a matter of someone showing up and doing it and then it just all falls out and happens? So I don't know. Um, I, I, um, in as much as Shopify may be seen as something that, uh, that succeeded, um, that alone didn't do it. Um, I, uh, so, um, <laughs> um, it would have been very, very nice if, uh, uh, if, if that would happen. Now, um, there's like another cohort of founders coming through who are like some of them have been part of Shopify or come back from, from, from a valley. There's some great companies in, uh, Calgary, like Neo, um, that, um, uh, are more ambitious, but like it's, um, I think that, um, I think it's a decision. I, I, I think it's a bit of a, a decision. Um, and it, it, I, I would like the, the time it worked perfectly was, um, and Canada was hosting Winter Olympics, which is now a little bit of ancient history, but there was actually a program Canada wide that's called Own the Podium, which, because, you know, that makes sense. Like it's, it's, it's home. We love, we have more winter than most. <laughs> so therefore <laughs> let's do well. And, um, um, and then we did like, it's just like, it's by far the best performance of uh, the Canada Olympic team of, of, of all times. And it's, um, so I, I, I do wonder if it's actually like, I, I think to systematize it and, and, and make it stick, that's, um, changing a culture is very, very difficult, but instances of just like giving everyone permission to, 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 to go for it have also been super successful. Why were you miserable in German school? <laughs> I think because German school at that time was, um, in love with, uh, serializing out answers and trying to fill you up with as many answers as possible and hope that you would be able to apply them to problems you encounter later. I, I don't know if there's a, a good theory for that being a sensible approach that would stand up to reason. It certainly didn't work for me. I, I, I kind of am literally opposite. I need to, I, I need to have every problem before I can learn the answer to it. Um, and, um, um, that just, um, was in stark contrast. Um, you know, what, what being taught in the nineties and so and during these times was like in stark contrast with what was interesting for, you know, working with computers. That was really just like the most fun thing for me to do, uh, during this time and seemed very valuable even, uh, then. And, um, you know, this, this, this probably sounds too abstract. I, like Latin as first extra language is just like not highly utilitarian. <laughs> um, and, um, um, that is not the, like knowing Latin is very rarely the correct answer to questions you might encounter later in life. Um, so, um, it's, it's, it's not, not saying it's not valuable in some way, but maybe like start with English. That would be a good start. But there's plenty of technical talent in Germany and plenty of young people speak English quite well. Why aren't there more German tech giants? <laughs> I mean, the hot take here on this is like, there are, they're just, they're called Shopify and Palantir and others, right? Like it's, um, um, so it's. But in Germany, Germany's not a tiny nation. The EU is of course a large market. Enough of you speak English to have a common language. I would like, I would love to know. I honestly, I, I think about this a lot, but I don't know if I have, if I'm the best person to, 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 um, analyze it because it's like what I'm hearing and, uh, it makes sense. It's just that it, tech is something that Americans do from perspective of Germans. And it's like, it's, it's, I think, I really don't think people, the general population is believes that is truly like tech tech is adding <laughs> a lot to life. Um, uh, it, it's seen as a, uh, um, a, 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 
this may be a reflection of areas I go to visit. Again, I mostly visit um, uh, family and friends uh, in, in smaller, uh, <laughs> like not the tech centers of Germany, and um, having these conversations. Um, and and there, there is a very much a pessimism uh, about the future that I think means you cannot build tech companies because you kind of have to be optimistic about the future to like, otherwise, why would you want to, uh, uh contribute to, um, you know, progress and, and making it go, uh, come, come to be faster. So, um, I, I think that's one thing. I think it's very hard to, uh, uh, hire staff that's willing, like the, like in North America, I found that, uh, people take big chances, um, to if if they believe and have conviction in a company doing something, they would um, leave a excellent career to uh, give it a go. Um, and it just like also seems to not be true in 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 Germany. So like access to excellent talent is just simply harder based on um, them just m making culturally decisions differently. Partly because I think startups are a uh, low status pursuit, um, uh, from the best I can tell. Let's say we compare Germany to the Netherlands, which is culturally pretty similar, very close to Koblenz. They have ASML, Adyen. Netherlands is a smaller country. Why have they done relatively better? Or you could cite Sweden, again, culturally not so distant from Germany. You're asking very good questions that I much rather would ask you, you know? <laughs> like, um, uh, I, I don't think I have much. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wish I know. I, like, I spent... Um, I, 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 I started a small company in Germany, didn't do anything. Um, 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 so it's not like people didn't do this. Um, and, um, I came to Canada, did it again. This time it worked. And, and then I was heads down for a very long time building, um, my thing because it just like was consuming. So like I, I, I didn't pay too much attention to you. Um, uh, because I wasn't even very deliberate about where I started a company, right? Just I started in Ottawa and because that's where me and my wife were during the time she was studying there. And then we, we could, find great talent there that was overlooked it seemed and um gave everyone a project to be ambitious with and uh it worked and you know i think that if you create in a, a geography a consensus that um your company that really really is worth working for because it's uh, it, it's interesting work great work and might actually lead to something then you can build it and um um uh I think this is something that i i just i don't quite understand why this is not possible to do in uh you know, so many places in Germany, because again, Germany does have this wonderful appreciation of craftsmanship, which I think is actually underrepresented in software. I think, um, it's only recently, um, usually by Europeans, um, uh, being brought up, uh, uh, Patrick Collison's talks about it, um, uh, more and more. And, and, and certainly I do too. Um, but like so making software is a crafts is, is a craft. Um, and, um, I think in this way, Germany, Czech Republic, other places, Poland are like extremely enlightened in, in, in making this part of a apprenticeship system. And I apprenticed as a computer programmer and uh, I thought it was exactly the right way to learn these things. Um, now, um, that, that means there's, I believe, a lot of talent that then, um, makes decisions other than, uh, putting it together to build ambitious startups. And, um, so something needs to be uncorked by the people who have more insight than I have. I think part of a hypothesis is that the Netherlands and also Sweden are, are somewhat happier countries than Germany. People smile more, at least superficially, the more optimistic, the more I think it's optimism, yeah. going. It's striking to me that Germans, contrary to stereotype, I think they have a quite good sense of humor. <laughs> but a lot of it is irony or somewhat black. And maybe that's bad for tech. And I wonder, people in the Bay Area, I mean, do they, do they have a great sense of humor? I'm not sure they do. Uh, maybe there's some correlations across those variables. I, I, th I think they actually banned humor for a little while from the Bay Area. I think it might, might make a comeback now. Um, it's, uh, I think that I, I really do think there's, um, it, it seems like an easy out, but like it's actually potentially, I, I, I like the, the optimism angle is lot bearing for this. Uh, you got to believe that the future is going to be better than today, um, to want to make the future come, um, uh, sooner <laughs> which is um in your tiny 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 little way i'm not talking about every company is changing the world but like every company is kind of uh causing like like if you want it to work it's like causing progress uh both 
like add to the vector of progress, but also uh, maybe uh, just change uh, some trajectory in some space a little a little bit. Uh, I think I think if Shopify wouldn't have happened, something like it, this might be a highly distributed, uh, uh, like many many pieces of software or um, uh, something else would be there. It would not look like Shopify. It's like like the the world of computing is extremely path dependent. I mean, just like every other part of the world. Um, so you want to be able to add something because, uh, so <laughs> this is also why ignorance is usually useful because like, um, um, uh, you should, um, be ignorant to the low odds, um, in the beginning. I think one of the reasons why, um, uh, you know, at least some, uh, founders often are young <laughs> and, um, I, um, you know, these kind of com things are important. Another aspect of the European Union, if uh, like, it's just like, people also study very long, right? Like I, I know this has gotten sort of updated in the time since I was there, but man, I had a, <laughs> in my trips home, I had a lot of 32 year old student friends. Um, and that's just like, cool. Um, you know, that's a, there's, there's a significant amount of Nobel prizes are awarded to people for their work in their twenties. Uh, right. So, and, um, we should just have a clear cultural understanding that those are, um, useful years to be out and building things. And, um, um, so, you know, I think it's, it's not, nothing is single causal. And I think there's a lot of contributing facts. I would have trouble, I think, weighting them, but like optimism is the one lack of optimism is, is the one I would put on the top of uh, the list. What is a German language word that you still use when you think, because there's no close English language equivalent? Uh, I would, I don't have. <laughs> I, I'm they, right. That would, that's a possible contender. I, Heimweh is Sehnsucht. like Verschlimmbesserung is such a good word. <laughs> okay. So what that means is, um, uh, is, um, by trying to improve something, you made it worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's like, I mean, again, maybe it's also like born out of pessimism about the future, but like, it's just so wonderful because you see it all, often, you know, some, you know, Chesterton's fans, people don't often know, um, uh, what parts of a world large system are important parts that have a lot of cultural or, or technical understanding coded in them and which ones are just there because we were in a hurry building the system and um, sometimes you uh, find out which is which uh, very quickly afterwards and a word is useful in that is a good word how about auseinandersetzung you know the process of coming to terms with something <laughs> rather than just putting it out there but, but they are beautiful. Like, I mean, even Gestalt is a word that isn't, I mean, that might actually have been, um, uh, integrated now in English, but like, it's, there's no equivalent, um, uh, like, like of that. Um, uh, and, um, I don't know. There, there's, there's a, um, but, but the reverse is also interesting. You know, um, entitlement is not, um, some, a word that Germans have, right? Like, uh, which, which I find really, really interesting. I, I make, I, Sometimes in Shopify, I have to explain to people when I sit them down, it's like, hey, gratitude and entitlement are two sides of the spectrum. <laughs> like, um, and, um, you, it's your choice where you are here after you have a pleasant experience or, or maybe with some downsides, um, uh, uh along the way. <laughs> um, very important conversation to have with interns sometimes. Um, uh, if, if, uh, you know, if, I don't know, the provided food is cold or something like this. <laughs> um, so, um, try to, uh, like I, I, I get in these situations where I sit down. Okay, well, I'm doing this in German now because this is the moment where, I, like, I have to roll out this thing, and then I'm just like struggling with, like, because there's no term, and and I'm like, that's an interesting fact that we don't have a word for this. So this, this happens as well. Now, of course, someone's going to send me like a string <laughs> like this, which actually perfectly represents it and does a better. But anyway, nothing I could easily um, recall. Do you still read books in German? I, uh, occasionally I, I, I have like, I must read one book in, 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 in German a year, uh, as a, um, sort of self policy, which I have violated last year, which I was not like super happy about, but like, um, um, it's, it's like one thing which I find disappointing, uh, is when, you know, like op obviously I take the opportunities when I, when I want to go for something that's, um, originally written in German that I'm going to try to read, like read this in, a, um, in original. Um, um, so like Wittgenstein's Tractatus is, is an example of this. It's like the English translation is so much better because, um, your translator asked for so many clarification by Wittgenstein, uh, that, that it, it just ends up being like readable. So I found a book, which was, um, 
it was actually beautifully said. I think the MIT published it of like um, the original German, uh, the English translation, and a translation back to German from the English translation, all uh, all in three columns, and that was perfect. So um, sometimes the English translations also just often get updated again, like for Kant or something like this. Um, and I, I do. I'm actually a f fan of rewriting books, uh, like f every. F I don't know, 25, 50 years for next two generations down the line, um, because it's, they, they just get hard to access. So often you get that by reading the English translation. So I'm trying to, I, I'm I feel like I lose opportunities to do this. In your opinion, where exactly is the dividing line between North Germany and South Germany? So people in Freiburg, they'll say like, oh, it's Mannheim, but that's insane, right? Where is it for you? I, you know, you ask me to 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 to, to poke horns nest here, which I <laughs> like. I I I'm gonna have too many unhappy people by actually committing at all to this question. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna take a pass. Like I would say, Limburg is still South Germany because historically it's been Catholic, but somewhere not too far north of Limburg, North Germany would start. It's very it's very hard to draw a straight line, though. I, I, you end up with a very 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 jagged line. Um, I think if you if you if you're trying to do a best possible job there, um, um, I, it's it's anyway. Lots happened in Germany for, for a long time, like to <laughs> uh, to 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 cause uh, culture to be ca calcified to wherever it is now. Yeah. So Canada in the data I see right now, Canada seems to be having a per capita GDP recession, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure how to interpret that. The U.S. has been growing at a, a decent clip. Uh, Europe, more or less steady, growing at a very slow pace. Why, in per capita terms, does Canada seem to be moving backwards? Is that a composition effect, or how do you read that? Yeah, I um, I mean, this worries me a great deal. Um, I, um, I don't know if we, we saw this. I mean, okay, so comparing to the United States is a bad idea in general i mean actually it's the best possible idea if you're going for optimism but it's not the best idea if you um, are looking for um staying sane right like america like like america is exceptional it's it's, it's an un unbelievable um economic might it's an unbelievable country in so many uh ways um i, I you hear in every country well if you compare to the united states in this one thing um things are bad i'm like well uh, I mean, the, I think the comparison of Germany to Netherlands is a lot makes a lot more sense. I think that's a way you can make real, uh, uh, you know, figure out what might be uh, actionable. America is just like really, 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 really different. So first of all, that um, so every once in a while, Canada has an economy that really can hang with America. I think two thousand years yeah, so of fourteen, fifty, fifty, um, like it, it was looking really, really well. I think what happened there. Um, again, nothing has a sing is sing singularly causal, but like it's. Um, it's it's the productivity numbers are just really low, and I think the um, employment in the public sector having grown the degree it has is just like again I don't know if it's if if it's causally related uh, or, or or correlation with the same thing, but like I it's it just me is pretty clear to me that if um, um, the ratio of referees to 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 builders is or critics to builders is going out of whack that like things grind to a halt. So um, we saw this in even Shopify ad adoption. Like it, it's, it just took a lot longer for Canada to, to, to want digital products. Um, um, and um, um, Shopify is always selling and, and, and finding its best customers in the United States for first 10 years easily. And then you have already, like if you, <laughs> if you believe me, that Shopify is pretty good. Now there's a compounding advantage for, for people who have adopted it earlier. And um, um, I think that is sort of like a tiny zoom of a much bigger fractal that I think is, a, is at play there. How has Canada changed the most since you moved there? Hmm. It feels like it's the optimism angle. And I think this is like a thing that worries me the most. It, it just, I think Canada had, is massively, had a massively underappreciated at the time project in multiculturalism that worked. And it, um, uh, start, started under Pierre Trudeau, really, um, just putting country together it, like, with, with great leadership, great uh, vision. And Canada had a string of leaders that were like kind of almost too good for a small country. Um, and, um, um, you know, there, there was like this, hey, we are getting along well, we are friendly, we are um, um, 
like it's it's a, it's a high trust environment um and um uh there there's the best days are going to be ahead of us um and i think i it's so hard to point at exactly what uh, what changed it um but um um the cultural narrative has just sh- simply shifted now I, I i do think people are a little bit more circumspect and um looking at the the country i think the the sort of problems are more clear like it's it's like there's a lot hanging on real estate and real estate is not by itself. <laughs> like that's, that's, it's, it's valuable to a second order, uh, because of all other sort of things being valuable. I think the worst thing is like this, uh, from my perspective is this, um, that Canada seems to be okay just exporting uh, the raw materials for everything. And that is usually like that started as beaver pelts being sent to London for turning into high margin hats. Um, and it's like Canada has no refineries. It all goes to Houston, even though it produces a good deal of uh, uh, like uh, energy. Um, um, and, uh, you know, this is say, Waterloo is like basically a raw material export, um, uh, as well as one of the greatest schools in planet Earth. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, Waterloo students are lot bearing for Silicon Valley, uh, companies. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, readiness to export the CEO cultural conversation about like, you know, maybe we should have people build things here as well. Um, and, um, um, there's just no, it, it seems like a country which is now so, has so little self-confidence, um, that, um, I, I see this as running Shopify, um, a, a, a huge amount of our, uh, employees we hired last night, uh, year. I think it was, um, 60% or so of our engineers with boomerangs, um, coming back from storied American companies. Uh, most of them were Canadian because, like they and and often they say this because we keep we wanted to work for Apple because my parents said, "Man, you're really doing well in tech. You you might actually get a real job in that Apple <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or so." And um uh and and you know if you hear this a lot, you do, and then you go there and you know what um uh you actually liked that job and then you come back and 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 um um I think this kind of thing needs to happen a lot. I, I, we we need to have some more of these stories out there. Canada's a pretty good country. Um, uh, it's it's. I think it's an, a major major asset to the United States as a as a as a, as a great friend. And um, um, I think a stronger Canada is better for for absolutely everyone. Do you agree with the stereotype that Canada is especially weak when it comes to branding? So there's Shopify, there's Molson. You could say there's hockey, NHL, but not that many Canadian brands. Yeah. Why is that? Or do you well, challenge because Canada, the premise? Because Canada exports no products. But, uh, you know, Shopify and Lululemon export. I'm sure I'm forgetting. I mean, Molson, sure. But, like, um, I don't think it's, like, not ability to do branding. It's just Canada does not appreciate commercialization of any kind. Um, it's, like, Canada wants to, in, you know, invent, um, like, it's it's remarkable how many papers that are, foundational to the current evolution of um uh of of ai boom uh in the university of toronto waterloo to papers um uh you know jeff hinton and, and his lab and so and 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 jeff Bengio and so on it's um like canada lo- like loves to have a eureka moment and it seems as since it's seen as a low status um thing to do to then go and try to build a business around it which you know it's probably amazing from a perspective of our neighbors, <laughs> but like, um, probably not so good for the, uh, you know, sort of wealth of a country. Like it's, 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 it's it can't, we are not metabolizing any of the kind of, uh, uh, innovation. Shopify is a little, is very much an operation here as like, let's make something that at least was a brand to businesses initially and increasingly people sort of, um, beyond businesses, uh, recognize it. Um, and, um, so yeah, like I, I think that's, that is an important thing. Like it's, it's, it's the same thing as like, hey, we don't refine the oil, or we don't make the hats for from from the beavers, or um, you know, we just don't create the final product. We 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 send the raw materials everywhere. And I I I would, if I could change one thing, it's I would do that. I would put um, like, and by the way, this is deeply encoded in policy, right? So there's a thing called uh, SRED tax credits. I'm not gonna bore you with the details there, but like you can claim was to if you if you do it says research and development um and um um 
try to claim them for anything that's commercially related. It's 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 actually uh, it, it's it's remarkable. We at various points stopped just applying for them just because we were just too commercial in, in lots of ways. So you're being paid for doing original research, which I think is a great policy. Uh, like because some like often ha- original research kind of could need, need a boost. But then going and um, turning this into a product, you're like completely left out. Like if you want to claim anything, you will have to uh, ask every one of your people and the staff to have meticulous time sheets and, and submit an, an ungodly burden of documentation, which literally makes the commercialization jobs terrible. And so therefore, you know, it's like um, the good people don't want to um, um, work in this environment and so on and so on and so on. Do you think in Canada there will be an enduring backlash against immigration? I don't mean the phony student visas. Let's assume that's taken yeah. care of. But immigration as it had been proceeding, is that the standing equilibrium or is that going to dwindle an asymptote? So Canada is about, I, I, I don't know if it's accurate numbers, but I think there's a directionally right. This is, Canada is about 41 million uh, people in the last three years, um, 3 million people immigrated to Canada, which, you know, is a significant percentage increase in, 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 in size of population. Um, there is a lot of cultural conversation about this. Uh, I think the, the, most of the conversation that I see is not really about uh, the veracity of, 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 of immigration in general, but actually about like the sort of um, fact that in this time of adding 3 million immigrants, we added like almost no housing, which is like, so <laughs> that's, it, it, you know, just that's, that's just like a, not a great idea to do that. Um, and um, um, that's causing a lot of, uh, you know, bad downstream effects. Immigration has my entire 20 years I've been here, 20 something, um, been very popular in Canada, which I thought was one of the most unique parts of the country. Um, that's sort of part of a statement I made earlier about, um, an almost unacknowledged, uh, effortlessness to multiculturalism that, 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 that worked. And, um, um, Canada also implemented the thing that everyone's talking about, a skills-based visa program with point with point systems, which is um well designed and and um has been doing a lot of work for Canada uh in, in the past. It's not quite clear to me why um we walked away from uh sort of these priors that have clearly identified to work all of it and 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 certainly like things in policy land changed um and opinions changed. I don't think people like this um, experiment. My significant hope is that this is not uh, going to be one of those baby out of a bathwater uh, moments because we have a great skills based um, um, uh, immigration system. And I think Canada should just like fall back on that and, and, and uh, you know, round that up. Why does Ottawa remain such an underrated city? So Americans will take a three day trip to Toronto or Montreal, but Ottawa is excellent. There's the National Museum, very good mm-hmm. food. Obviously, it's nation's capital why does it stay so unknown what a wonderful setup and it's close right thank you thank you for the platform it's it's a wonderful (laughs) city like i um uh you know we we we, we, i mean it's not we ended up there because my my, my wife was born there but then actually studied there i I maybe not expecting to go back and then we stayed for 20 years and we built like shopify built a great company there because it's just like people really, really love it there and they were like itching for better employer i suppose um and um and 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 yeah i i mean i have to i mean obviously I, it's it also gets really cold i i had these wonderful parts like we just like my commute to work was uh the the, the canal or skating on the canal every day and um um you know where else in work can you have a commute like this but also um you know the first time i visited it was really really cold in winter and that was like i i, I sort of had my questions and um when the summer you go to a cottage and that's just like the other side of the whole thing. Um, um, and it's just like, it's a wonderful quality of life. And I think that matters. It's, it's, um, don't you have the world's largest outdoor ice skating rink and it's yeah. seven kilometers or something? <laughs> yeah. That, that was my commute. Uh, that was your I, commute. I, I really, all seven really, kilometers or how yes, much of yes. it? <laughs> uh, well, uh, maybe two of those was, was a commute. Um, it was right, right off his downtown. And then, um, we were living along the canal, like two blocks in. And it was, it was very cool. A very, very, very nice thing. Uh, nice way to start the day. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I wrote my best code those days. <laughs> the future of the internet. When will virtual reality stores matter? Um, I got, that's a very specific, like, I, 
That's a good question. I virtual reality stores. I don't. I, I don't have a great answer um, there. I, I don't think they will. I, I don't think we will port the exact like the, the, the Fifth Avenue boutiques online, other than for um, having virtual twi- like uh, uh, virtual twins for them for, for people who specifically want to see those. I, I don't think this is going to be um, um, the, the future of e-commerce is going to be um, uh, strolling through um, malls or virtual malls or these kind of things. So I, I think the exact way this is all going to compose is going to is going to be different. I think the innovation in, in virtual reality are going to be much more about. Uh, um, you know, virtual avatars or like, or, or, or real people like having you, like, it's just like talking to the product. Like, Shopify represents mostly the catalog of product that people really want rather than the necessities, right? Like, it's like the Fifth Avenue boutiques would also be ones using Shop Point of Sale. Um, and, um, Purchases are a lot, a lot more deliberate around this. Like people often spend uh, weeks sort of thinking about this, this something they would like to purchase and they're really looking forward to the package arriving, hopefully very quickly. And so I think there's lots and lots and lots of touch points there. Um, the place that is probably the most virtual um, area that we see is already like furniture, like the placing the couch in your living room is just like better than looking at it in, a, in, 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 in some store, right? Like, uh, so, so I think we see the early innings in this and there's a couple of technologies that we are tracking, like, um, Gaussian splats and these kind of things that are just like going to make it vastly simpler for people to, um, um, make digital twins available from, uh, um, you know, whatever they managed to put together in real life. And so I think, I think a bunch of this is coming, but like, I don't know if that, what, what's the date and what exactly is the form factor. Not talking about back office, but actual retail. Do you see in advance how AI is going to be changing retail? And what does that look like? I think it will play a... Um, I think it will play a significant role for sure. I, I, I change retail. I think it will also, I mean, I think we will see significantly better products being made. I, I, I do think, so I, I have extremely uh, bullish um, uh, um, view on AI on specifically around the utilitarian value. I think there's enormous advantages in co- for company building. I think there's enormous advantages for product creation. I think, um, um, what we engineers, um, experience around, um, uh, co-pilots just right now getting good that, that are helping us do the job that we already have a significant craft in, but like do it better is extremely uh, convincing. And I think, I think people would want, want a um, co-pilot or a sidekick or something like this along um, more of the things they do, which are like at the edges of their ability, which, which I think in in a retail world, um, uh, on a creation side of businesses and on a creation side of uh, products, it's just like basically all the time. It's it's a stretch. It's a way you put yourself out there. You create the best thing. It's a way. It's a way. Um, it's a deeply personal thing to create the sort of first version of a product that uh, you you try to create a company around. And so, um, I think that's really really powerful. Like super, like highly intelligent, very knowledgeable, n- 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 zero judgment. Um, uh, always available, fast returning. Um, uh, even text, um, AIs are going to be fantastic, but increasingly, I think, um, I, I think software is going to go through a, um, we think, um, in, for this decade, I, it's just quite clear that, um, most software, like we have learned how to build excellent, um, user interfaces, We're quite approachable, like we simplify, uh, enormously complex space to um uh easy to reason about point decisions um uh in 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 a, in a pretty approachable and legible uh, uh interface which also look good and you know like all these kind of uh things that's sort of uh top of a of, of, of a hill we've been climbing for 20 years uh so since ba- or a little bit less since whatever whatever moment you pick in which um web 2.0 started which really was the beginning of ever like engineers saying hey we figure out how to build the applications off the internet and um that's the string we've been pulling uh on for all these years and we've built all very very valuable companies um but but that replaces um you know, that basically replaces the like going directly to the database or going to the command line we built like these interfaces i think now we are instead of creating 
a place where someone can run around and and switch a whole lot of toggles and 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 change preferences to uh, suit their particular idea. I think people can just tell us their goal, and then we can work together on this. I think goal oriented software is actually what we always wanted because that actually meets people where they are. It's like how you work with colleagues together too. Um, and it's not, I'm actually really excited figuring out what this is going to look like. I, I love the times where there's significant transition. Um, um, I thought the 2010s were kind of boring because we kind of just kind of did the stuff that we figured out in the, sorry, the 20s were boring. T 10s were, sorry, I should say this right. 2010 to 2020 was boring. <laughs> so, um, because we basically just scaled the stuff we figured out, um, towards the end of, uh, um, 2000 to 2010 period. Um, and so now we're going to get into much more interesting times again. And um, there's a lot to be figured out. And that's exciting in the industry. And I think where we will end up is a much, 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 much higher mountain that we couldn't have seen from the original hills, right? And so that's, that's, that's always exciting to me. And I think it's going to be very valuable to people. Now, you work with so many retailers. Do you feel you understand retail price stickiness? Because economists don't. A lot of economic models imply prices are sticky, but when they move, they should move a lot. But you look at the data we have, it seems that big and small price movements are about equally likely, which means we as economists are fools. <laughs> How well do you understand all this? I don't think I have a better line. I, honestly, I, I just like business are just so different that they are hard to uh, average out. And like, there are a lot of businesses that do their pricing strategy is aesthetics. And aesthetics is one of those hand waves that humans do to uh, explain away enormous amount of background processing that goes into it uh, in the best case scenario, um, like lots, like an entire career um, of, 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 of knowledge rolled into an intuitive, quick uh, decision or completely making it up like like it's sort of both sides of a like a uh, um, midbit meme here and um like i i think economics fundamentally will have to um uh, uh you know roll a lot of a lot of data points into um uh, an average and then try to see uh which direction people do and there's a lot of canceling each other out going on in in the spaces that we can uh, we are concerned about um um but sort of interesting. I mean, we went through a high uh, inflation period and just like tracking when prices in the system were kind of following um, um, that was deeply different based on what kind of products are uh, and, 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 and how people consider purchasing, buying these products, um, obviously on margins too. So again, I, I mean, I feel for the economists um, um, <laughs> like, because I don't think, you know, <sighs> I think physics has given us a um, sense that there is a simple equation underneath everything. Um, uh, and we've built an aesthetic around this. And I think um, often too many other fields want to be more like physics. And um, I, I, I think I think actually things are wonderful when they're complex. <laughs> like I think, um, like, I don't know if you want to talk about company building, but like, um, you know, companies are complex adaptive systems much more than uh, being um, sort of, industry applied versions of military uh, uh slightly more complex organizations of military service um that's a, a re recognition which is not that like old right like it's 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 um to a certain degree it can explain why um um companies run by some of their engineering type people have been outperforming um things because people have a incorrect understanding what engineering is and how, how it works engineering um is fundamentally, at least for the last 30 years, has mostly spent time on trying to take non-deterministic systems and make them deterministic, which is kind of what we do in the real world with um, policy, mostly, and, and, and process. And um, so I think what we can do now, uh, like, uh, like if you're an engineer running a company, I think you come pre-equipped with uh, ideas like uh, systems thinking um, uh, instead of, um, you know, World War II organizational structures um, and um, companies are the ultimate of non-deterministic systems that you're trying to get to uh, build fantastic products at great uh, at great pace um, inclusive of all the creativity by the various uh, actors in the company and and like trying to build inside of it a culture um, uh, a story incentive systems that are just making so that um, the maximum amount of everyone's activity actually uh, you know like for like 
for this mission. And um, I find these these things just so fascinating to uh, to to to, um, uh, to think about because I this is sort of going back to the beginning. I, I saw myself as an outsider, and I made a study of other fields from afar, and I just um, um, there are so many amazing ideas in basically any given field that you can possibly name or imagine. Um, like, and often what happens is like every field kind of reinvents the same uh, uh, core ideas and gives different names to them. And making a study of doing this kind of thing and just saying, okay, well, how do we build a better company? I think companies are very bad, like all of them. I like I think li literally everyone, um, but I'm my, my me and my contemporaries. Me, um, Myself especially, we are going to be terribly embarrassed by the companies we ran uh, in the early 2020s. And so um, because there's all these things we didn't yet have or didn't yet understand or so, and then, um, you know, eventually we'll figure this out. And then how could we even build anything before we figured out this thing? Again, I find that just like such a interesting um, um meta field of research. It's almost applied good thinking. <laughs> like, uh, but what that, if we that, never figure it out? I mean, how sure are you that in the future... It will be that much better. We'll have better technology, but organization. Yeah. Um, well, we have we we have new primitives on which we can um, build. Like sometimes also philosophies, right? Like, but I, I'm not saying we're going to build a perfect company. There's no like everything is a set of trade offs. I I just like compared like if the best soccer team on planet Earth is like uh, gets at like eighty percent of how good uh, the eighty percent of perfection. You you freeze frame. The replay, everyone, very few people use a muscle that incorrectly while actually approaching the goal and then, um, you know, beautiful orchestration of, um, um, uh, uh, you know, co cooperation without with zero communication. And, you know, that's like, what's a company? A company is 5%. Like, how many memos are never re read? And, um, like, partly because, um, so, so, which to me tells you, you, if you just get to six percent, you're already doing better. Like that's that's a pretty good way of not being as embarrassed as everyone else. I think realistically, I, there's going to be a limit because these are not like a soccer game is the same one every time. You can actually practice for it. Uh, like a, a company is, you know, every day is a new day, it's a new puzzle box dumped on everyone's desk. Um, it's it's it, it's a different environment. But still, like I think companies are vastly better now. Like and I started as an engineer, even like uh, apprenticing under um, my master. He said you have two years after you start writing code for a project, um, after which it's like someone puts cement in a code base and you're never gonna change a thing again. And that was just like accepted back then. And now like we have pieces of software that are twenty years old and feel 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 the delight to work on because we just um, build up these understandings. There's no like a lot of these lessons work in other areas as well. What do you think is the most common mistake your third-party retailers make in modeling the world? Um, thinking they have to build products for that other people like. I think this is the this is the sign killer. It's, it's just like um, Shopify is like <laughs> some call it Kevin Kelly's one thousand two fans essay applied at scale. Um, it's um, like like yes, everyone's different. Actually, there's clear um, clusters, <laughs> and um, um, the people who are willing to dedicate themselves to build a product and like like go through that entire rigmarole and, and put themselves out there, they're actually inside of a cluster more like the people everyone else wants to be. <laughs> and uh, if they build things that uh, they would love to have in the world, um, turns out that's they have extreme insight and authority over this rather than um, running. So this is, I'm a little bit like, there was some cross-pollination from the Lean Startup book to um, the retail world. And I think that's, especially in retail, this has been bad. I'm actually wondering if that was such so, so a good um, uh, set of ideas. I, I think there's good ideas in the book, but like, it feels a little bit ungenuine to just like, I think, customers are not the people who should say uh, what needs to be built i think they need to explain their problems and it's like about it, it like the builders have to figure out how to solve these problems better um i think that's otherwise it's an application of vision uh, and um uh, i think the best companies end up like following a long-term vision and um a long-term mission so i think that's part of it and then um <laughs> um the people who have access to capital they underinvest um in 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 growth um that's that's that always happens too um which I know it's scary to do internet marketing uh, as getting harder and harder, but like it's not priced out yet. 
So, did you learn all this selling snowboards, or it took until Shopify? Um, I know. I I mean the the reason why I love uh um, I mean. Okay, so the greatest thing about running Shopify is like my customers are like incredibly inspiring individuals, right? Like it's like it's you know it's it's in a lot of places it's very hard to convince people to actually talk to their customers. It's actually like sometimes um, our problem is the opposite. We we have too many people in conversations <laughs> with our customers. Um, they are super open to sharing what they see, and um, they're delightfully discontent with uh, what we give them. They, they will tell us how to do this better every single time, but they will also tell us, here's why, because, um, you know, they, you know, they are entrepreneurs and, and Shopify is honestly like a celebration of, you know, uh, sort of the small bits of capitalism. Um, it's like, we love ent entrepreneurship. Um, I, I should say like plenty of our customers have started on Shopify and are now like absolutely massive billion dollar plus retailers. Um, so it's not, it's not like, you know, there's a great variety um, uh, spending pretty much the entire spectrum of, of, of a retail industry in size um, uh, represented on the system now. Um, but a lot of the uh, largest uh, home, uh, people who started on the platform, um, which now has been around for 20 years. And, um, uh, but we, we love entrepreneurship. We love founding the concept of uh, uh, companies as a um, self-expression um, and um, um you know, just there's glory in entrepreneurship. And it's actually, it's underappreciated. It's like really, 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 everyone talks about it and politicians always like are like pro business formation, but like um, often the behavior doesn't confirm to this. It keeps getting harder to um, uh, policy wise. I mean, as talk about, you know, that's certainly an aspect in Germany as well. Um, um, to, to, it, it gets harder and harder to start companies in some places. Again, the United States is the opposite. Now we are not, there we have APIs to start businesses, which is exactly how things should be. Um, and so, um, friction changes the behavior a lot of, because everyone's allowed to be an intelligent actor in their local incentive system. And, um, if you're massively like, um, disincentivized of, um, starting a company, then, um, um, by just like BS you have to deal with and, uh, people want. So, um, we want to be a counter force to that. We want to, uh, remove friction where we can. Like, again, we can't, we, we can potentially advocate against bad policies, um, but um, we can do a lot about what happens after, you know, the policies stop mattering in the next step, because every single time we have found, every single time we've made um, Shopify more approachable or things that were previously complex and um, uh, gating uh, for people's success, every single time we made uh, something significantly simpler, um, it actually caused more success. Uh, it, it, it Like more people who otherwise didn't like, didn't make the hurdle and ended up making it through it and like not stopping is actually <laughs> the thing that really really leads to success in a in a in a, in a reductionist way and um um so we find that just to be a really really important discovery and then um um again when we are part of a journey uh, i i like to create the center systems and the the business system of Shopify in such a way that we're actually on the same side of a table with our with our customers. Like best thing we can do to grow Shopify is make our customers more successful. Um, because we're sort of we we we're in this together. Um, um, economically speaking, and um, um, so they take an active role in like talking to us. Like every one of the product managers has like hundreds of. WhatsApp conversations with um, uh, active WhatsApp conversations with uh, uh, fast growing businesses. And I think that's just kind of, that's a really, really, really fun way to build a business. Um, um, it's a very, very, very rare thing that your customers are, it's uh, like um, often the source of your inspiration. What's an interesting book you've read lately? Hmm. Interesting book. I've been sort of on a fantasy kick, which. Um, is not super conducive to that. But what do you um, learn about management from reading fantasy? Ha, you read I mean, Sanderson, right? You, you, that, am I correct? That's right. That's right. You, I read Sanderson. Um, um, uh, they're my, long. <laughs> they are long. They have commitments. Um, <laughs> um, my, uh, my, my, my son read uh, the entire Stormlight Archives, four books on March break, and I have such reading speed envy um, since then. Um, it's, um, it takes me a lot, a lot longer. Um, the... I, I mean, I think fantasy is full. I mean, fantasy is very often a mirror to society in some reductionist way. So it's a sort of, it's a simulation. It's a, it's a simpler scenario with some variables changed. And um, um, 
any book that you don't like f toss across the room f um, um, is a book that uh, usually has realistic characters that have some depth to them uh, and um, um, following their story, given sort of uh, the, the, the changes in environment is fantastic. I mean, obviously Lord of the Rings is an amazing management book, if you will, like, <laughs> like the way Gun, the way Gandalf shows up in just the right time, um, in, 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 in has the exact right combination of words is certainly something that's, um, uh, extremely valuable. Um, at least it conforms to, um, like the best version of the businesses that, um, the systems that we used to build. Um, and I think that's a, uh, that that's that's really valuable. I think I, I, as um, was interesting. I see, seeing like a state is just a fantastically book. I, I he just passed away. You probably I saw, saw that on Twitter. It's yes yesterday or so, yes. or a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, what a fantastic mind and like a I I know no. Um, it, it's one of those books you read which feels like it should be um, um, a book. It's a particularly good book in a space of lots of books, but it seems like totally like there, there seems to be nothing around it. It's just like. I've had people ask me, oh, recommend to me other books like Seeing Like a State. And I'm yeah. not sure what to say. Exactly. There's nothing, there's nothing quite like it. It's, it's, it's really wonderful. I've, um, I, I've been fascinated with, uh, with, with the Burnham books. Um, um, you mean and, Managerial and, Revolution? And, and Machiavellians are just like, f especially for when they were written incredible books. And, um, the, just the, the degree by which we have known a lot of these kind of things, but haven't known the solution to some of, uh, uh, you know, the things that, uh, Burnham, uh, um, discusses are just remarkable. I've, I think the best book I've read, um, was A Conflict of Visions, um, recently by, um, uh, Thomas Sowell. I, I just find that as an incredibly, um, insightful book by creating a prior to a lot of, sort of a political conversations, um, like a, like a, like a higher order differentiation between people. Uh, this is, uh, I, I've just found myself to be a very much a, um, someone who I, I, I just, I fundamentally think humans are limited and that's the best thing about humans. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that systems that we can build can, uh, lead us to incredibly amazing feats, um, of, of, of cooperation, coordination and, um, like, Optimizing everything you do to find the best set of trade-offs feels like an extremely mature way of uh, seeing the world, and um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm just constantly fascinated with um, uh, like uh, uh, Saul's writing. So, final question: What is it you hope to learn next? Um, I mean, I have been on a um, wonderful sort of reconnecting with engineering uh, kick for the last little while. I've, I've really, really. Um, had a great time coming back. I think co-pilots and AI has allowed me to, uh, like mitigate all the downsides of, of, of just not spending um, any like weekends and work on comp um, computing projects. I, again, I, I'm incredibly interested in, 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 in um, LLMs transformer, the, the, the machine learning world. And it feels like an almost unending well, um, of, uh, like of information, um, and, uh, a progress. So I, I'm just like, I'm fairly uh, tapped on 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 this. Um, it's 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 hard to see this as a field because it just like changes every every couple of days. Um, I am most thinking about, and I really feel like I can contribute a little bit to um, just thinking out how to have higher trust companies at scale. I, I just think people like the, the people make a lot out of um, people describe as I'm a small company person, a big company person. And I just don't think what's actually the differences. I think people are using labels around um, something they feel and they haven't got the right words. And it's probably many things that contribute to this, but certainly parts of these things are um, a sense of agency and ability to impact and ability to um, like not um, have like, a lot of what happens in companies is that uh policies and 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 um uh processes they're well meaning they bring up the floor so no one actually does something really really wrong but what they, people don't see is they also bring down the ceiling and so you end up in in this comp in these places where it doesn't matter who you are you're gonna do seven out of ten work and you know just the all concept of entrepreneurship is about going for world class um um and People need to leave in many places after a company gets to a certain size. I really think this is uh, simply a path-dependent, um, unacknowledged uh, situation that just comes from the way we have, uh, like the tools that we had to uh, um, uh, coordinate in um, people and everyone's sort of 
wholesale dismissal of trust as a part of this. I think the best areas of a company like Shopify keep this like ceiling open so that everyone can reach as high as they have ambition uh, for. Like some sometimes teams come together and just do absolute work class. That means you have to be willing to accept uh, underperformance as well. Like the floor can't be quite so high. So sometimes you get something you can't ship. Sometimes you get something of a direction then the wrong way. This all comes with a territory. And businesses tend to think about these things as disastrous events and um, uh, will do everything to not experience this and therefore stemmy all um, uh, uh, creativity. I think there's, I think we are now gaining tools um, and approaches that can do this in at scale. Um, I think um, just like what the engineers experience with, um, you know, writing code, and then um, you have a copilot that helps you uh, write code well, given um, what you're working on, um, and quickly gain the insights that you need and the task uh, that they're very understanding. And then um, after you are done with it, there's automated systems that test. Uh, there's uh, uh, like automated uh, linting, automated um uh, unit tests and so on. It's to me this. I, I know this sounds incredibly nerdy, but what this basically is is um, trust plus copilot and automated verify. So as as as, as a take on the trust, but all trust but verify um, thing. I think that creates a wonderfully um, fun environment. It's it it, it turns um, working on areas into you know almost video game ish. Um, um, and I think we know how to build these systems now. And I think we can build enormously better companies um, uh, this way that are just more fun for everyone and also lead to just better uh, products. And I, I just, th this is clearly possible because I've seen it be possible. And we just have to uh, come up with a couple more ideas along those ways. And we can have to figure out the particular downsides because, again, nothing is perfect, it's just different sets of trade offs. I think the different, the trade offs of, building a company this way rather than just reducing it to zero trust and mechanize everything is uh, enormous for society and like just productivity and and, and just like fun at work. And um, um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Toby Lutke, thank you very much. Great, uh, great conversation. I really enjoyed this. Thank you, Tyler.